Have you guys ever been working inside of a Lightroom Classic or Camera Raw and you feel like you're wasting a lot of time moving sliders around, experimenting, eventually getting where you want, but you kind of feel like maybe you're wasting some time or stumbling around? I'm gonna show you how to make your images pop and look their very best as quickly as possible while explaining to you the basic function and the correct order of using all these adjustments. <laughs> Hey Cafe Crew, it's Colin Smith here from PhotoshopCafe.com. Today we're gonna jump in and we're gonna have a look at Lightroom Classics Develop Module, which will be the same as the basic panel inside of Camera Raw. Also works on Lightroom Mobile. So all these sliders are the same no matter which one you're using. And it doesn't matter if you're using Mac or Windows, they're all the same. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you exactly which order to use these sliders and tell you exactly what they do so you understand what you're doing so you can quickly get to the result you want without wasting a lot of time. So if you're new here to the cafe, drop a comment and say hi. And the rest of you cafe crew, make them feel welcome, say hi back. And also if you haven't subscribed yet, hit the subscribe button right now. All right, let's jump in and start. So here's a photo that I shot with my DJI Mavic 2 Pro. And it doesn't matter what camera you're using, the settings and the order are exactly the same. First thing we wanna do is set up our workspace. We wanna maximize our sliders and we wanna maximize our image space. So if you just opened up Lightroom and you haven't clicked and dragged across here yet, do that now. Because if you look here, see how long those sliders are? If you click and drag, now that elongates the sliders and it enables us to get more precision when we're working. Now we need to make up for that with the space because the image is a little compressed. Click the left arrow that hides it. And now we've got a maximized workspace. All right, so let's go into the develop module and we're gonna go into the basic panel, which will be the first panel inside of Camera Raw. This is broken into three areas, color, tone, and presence. So why don't we start with the color? The first thing we wanna do is go for a very natural result and then we can enhance it and flavor it. So grab our eyedropper, move over to an area that should be white, which would be here, it'll be a white or a neutral gray, click, and that will set the overall white balance. Now you can choose the settings from under here as well. Sometimes I just like to use that, and if you shot with a gray card or x right color checker, then just click on the white or the gray on there, and boom, it's gonna set it for you. All right, so next thing we wanna do is we're just gonna move quickly down to the tone. We want to set our overall brightness and darkness, but before we do, what we need to do is bring in the details for us to work with. So if you look here, we've got exposure, contrast, shadows, highlights, whites, and blacks. Exposure just sets the overall brightness. So let's just kind of just tweak that a little bit and see where do we want to go. Let's take it to about there. I'm not giving it too much of a boost, just a little bit. All right, now we're going to go in and we're going to recover our detail. So what is the difference? Highlight, shadows, highlights, whites, and blacks. What's the difference between a highlight and a white or a shadow and a black? Well, I'm glad you asked, <laughs> even though, well, maybe you thought it. Okay, so shadows and highlights recover details in our image in the shadow in the highlights. So the dark areas and the light areas, we can bring out details that would otherwise be lost. The blacks and whites boost the dark areas and the light areas. So what they're doing is they're pushing the tones, not the details. So shadows and highlights give us information, whites and blacks give us contrast. So they enable us to give punchy blacks, kind of like cleaning a dirty window, and nice clean whites, if they get milky, we can clean them up and give it that snap and punch. All right, so why don't we start with shadows and highlights? What we wanna do is we wanna recover our highlight areas. So we can slide it to the left and notice that happens. How far do we go? Well, here's a tip. Hold down the Alt or the Option key, and you can see right now that white area is where we've lost detail known as clipping. Let's move it to the left till the clipping is gone. And now we've recovered our highlight details. Let's look at our shadow. Now you can hold down Alt or Option here and see you know, where we're going. If you move this to the left, we can see, hey, you know, we're not really clipping much but that's not really how I would use the shadows. The shadows, I like to eyeball it and just increase it a little bit, just so we can see some detail in here. Don't move it all the way. 
Because when you move it all the way, what happens is you open up every shadow, it removes the mystery, it removes the drama from the photo, and makes it look fake, kind of like a fake HDR. But if that's the effect you're going for, that's fine. So I'm just going to double click and I'm going to move this up, eyeballing it a little bit, just bringing back the details. Now, I don't want to go too far on this, particularly being a sunset picture. I want to have a little bit of shadow in there. It gives it shape and dimension as well. Okay, next thing we want to set is whites and blacks. So let's grab our blacks and I'm going to hold down the Alt or the Option key, move it to the left and we can see where it starts to clip. I mean, these areas are going to be forced to black. So you take your finger off and you can see what's happening. But what we want to do is just go to some of these areas where we can crush it down, like right there. And that's going to give the, the image body and depth without losing important details. So the areas that were black is just some of these areas in here under there, which we want to force to black. Okay, let's go to our whites. And if we hold down the Alt or the Option key, we can click on the whites. We can move it to the left if we want to recover more detail. And kind of use that in tandem with the highlights or we can move it to the right and give this image a little more punch what i'm going to do in this case is i'm actually going to just kind of enforce a highlight recovery a little bit by moving this to the left we're going to make up for this in a minute all right so what we've done now is we've set the basic color and tone so if we look at this before and after you can see a big difference all right, so what we've done now is we've got all of our basic ingredients together. We've got a photo that's nicely balanced with color and tone, but it doesn't have any style or flavor yet. So what we've essentially done is we've got everything ready for the roast, and now it's time to add a little bit of salt. We don't want to add too much or you'll spoil the meal, but we give it just enough and it just brings out the flavor. And that's what we're looking to do right now. So the next thing I want to go to is we're going to go under the profiles. And if we click here, it's going to pop open the profiles. Now the DJI drones and cameras have the built-in profiles, which is why you don't see them here. Canon, Nikon, Sony, you're going to see some there that you could choose from. But let's go down and look at some others. These all come with Lightroom. Now the difference between using the profiles and presets, the presets when we click those, all they do is they move the sliders. So all those adjustments we did before would get lost and overwritten. Here, when we work with the profiles, it adds it on top without moving our sliders, which is why we wanted to get our faithful adjustments first, and now we can properly appreciate how the profiles are gonna look. So let's go down and preview some. Just by rolling over them, we can see, hey, they've got different effects. See, that one gives it a little more punch. That one softens it. We can see, you know, different color effects different things like that. Okay, I kind of like the Artistic 5. I'm gonna click on here. Now, here's the thing, you can adjust the amount up here. But if we hit close, we can also adjust the amount right there. So that's the amount of that profile. So if we take it to zero, right now, this is unaffected, and now we just wanna sprinkle a little salt on our image by just moving it up just enough, right there. See, we're just giving it a, just a little flavor. And now if we hit the backslash key, we can see before and after. All right, we're ready to do a couple more adjustments. Let's move down to presence now. Let's give this image a little more snap. If we increase the clarity, see how that clarity just brings out the details a little bit. Don't push it too high. I've got it set to 19 there. I see people push it really high and see it just doesn't look good. It looks overdone. So let's just start with 19. So one of the things about clarity, Here's what's going to happen. The first time you start using it, you're going to get really heavy handed because you're going to like it. You're going to be like, wow, this is really making my image look sharp. Then you're going to find yourself applying a lot of clarity in the beginning and that's fine. Then as you get used to editing more and you start to edit more and more images, you're going to find yourself using less and less clarity because you're going to start to appreciate some of the other details in the image. So that's fine to go through those different swings and those different phases. It's called growth. And we've got dehaze. Dehaze is great for cutting through glare, fog, mist, these kinds of things. We're not gonna touch it just yet. The next one is vibrance and saturation. Saturation adds color across everything. So now it looks like we're painting it with markers. And if we take it all the way to the left, it's black and white. Vibrance does the same thing, but more intelligent. 
So what Vibrance does is it boosts the colors in the areas that have less color while protecting the areas that are already saturated. So see, it doesn't blow out the colors as badly. Same thing when you go the other way. So you can get some interesting effects. If I'm going to give it just a little boost, just three or four, not a lot. Now, all right, we're starting to get there. What I'm going to do now is I want to work on the sky. I'm going to change this a little bit. So let's grab the gradient here. And what I'm going to do is just click down. And what it's doing is, is applying this gradient. By the way, if you hold down shift key, you can just do it perfectly horizontal. So you don't have to be wiggling it, trying to get it just right. Okay, so it's setting a gradient. And so it's going to have that adjustment full force here and it's going to blend it down. This area in the middle is where it's blending. All right, so what we want to do is reset everything. So see where it says effect, hold down alt or option, click on reset, and now it's going to reset it so everything is neutral. So the real thing I want to do is I want to recover my highlights a little bit more. So let's go back under highlights and drag that to the left a little bit. Now the alt or the option to see the shadows and highlights doesn't work inside the gradient. Let's take it to about there. The next thing, remember I mentioned dehaze. Dehaze also works amazing on clouds. If I pull that up, see how it gives so much detail to those clouds? Obviously, we're not going to go that far. But let's just give it a little boost. That's looking nice. Now, just notice that while we're boosting, it's getting a little heavy there in the blacks. So maybe we can take the blacks and just push those back a little bit. There we go just so we don't plug everything up and make it look too heavy handed. All right, that's great. Now to apply this, all we need to do is just click on the gradient again. We go back to our regular adjustments. And now if we make an adjustment anywhere, it's gonna affect the entire image, see that? So let's look at this before and after. Starting to look good. Now we're gonna go and boost individual tones. The ones I'm interested in are the blues and the yellows and oranges. So why don't we move down here? HSL stands for Hue, Saturation, and Lightness. Hue is the color, red, green, yellow. Saturation is how much of that color. And lightness is how bright or dark is the image where those colors are. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to go under the luminance or luminosity and I want to just kind of play around here with my yellows. Maybe I'm going to brighten up those yellows a little bit. See that? And maybe the oranges too. We could brighten that up just a touch. Now we're going to go to the saturation and I'm going to boost these. So I'm going to give it a little bit more orange, a little bit more yellow. And you can see how we're enhancing that sunset. That's giving the image an overall nice kind of a look. Maybe I got a little heavy handed there. There we go. Now we want to do the same thing for the blues. Let's go under luminance. There's the blues, see them there? So what we want to do is go down and just brighten those up a little bit. Just a little. And I'm also going to do the same thing as the aqua. All right, I'm going to have seconds. I'm going to add a second gradient quickly. Let's grab a gradient and I'm just going to click and drag up at the bottom. I want to do a little something to the water here. So alt or option, reset it. Push the temperature to the left to make it a little bit more blue. Now we're going to go back under our colors. Let's just apply it just by clicking there. And by the way, if you ever want to go in and change it again, when you choose our gradient, you'll see pins and we can select either one of these by clicking on them and we can go ahead and adjust those again. But what we're going to do is do overall image adjustments. So we're going down here. HSL and what we're going to do is grab our luminance where we've set our blues there. Let's go to our saturation now and we're going to grab our blue and notice how we can boost our blues there and maybe give the aqua or aqua a little boost as well. So now we're just kind of boosting those colors in the areas that we want to. Okay, the next phase and the final phase is just overall balancing and now we're going to look at really a couple of things. One is a contrast. Do we want this image to have more contrast? Push it up and notice how it gives it a real snap, makes it more sharp, snap, punchy. Or we can take it to the left and it looks a little bit softer. So the mood you want to set is where we go with the contrast. I'm going to set it a little to the left because I want to just soften it down a little bit. I'm going to take my exposure and push it up just a little, just to brighten it up a little. And the other thing I'm going to do, because it's sunset, I'm going to warm it up. 
grab the temperature and increase it just a little bit look at that gives it that nice feel across there what will happen is with a little bit of practice you're going to be able to do this very quickly and in just a couple of minutes you're going to take a photograph which was this one before and make it look like that just in a few movements of the sliders so i definitely encourage you to just start practicing this is not going to come the first time watch this video over again if you need to and um, just take each section one at a time and start practicing and looking and analyzing the results the more you do this the more your eye is going to develop and your eye is going to start to see the subtle tones maybe when i was saying hey i'm shifting these blues or i'm shifting these oranges maybe you didn't really see them shifting or moving a lot what will happen as you start to work more, your eyes are going to start to see these things. You're going to start to see a photo and go, oh, there's a green color cast. I know when I first started, I didn't know what was a green or a red or a yellow color cast. I couldn't tell. But the more I did it, the more my eyes developed, I start to see these things. And then you start to see details in the photographs that maybe you didn't before. So maybe when you're looking at a photo, you're like, man, I don't know how to analyze this photo. Don't worry. Keep working. Keep pressing away. Do an image every day if you can, at least. And then before you know it, your eyes are going to start to develop and you're going to start to see these things. So anyway, guys, drop a comment. Let me know if you learned anything new in this tutorial. If you did, let me know what it was. And if you like this tutorial, smash the like button into dust. And by the way, guys, if you haven't subscribed yet to Photoshop Cafe, hit the subscribe button right now. And also ring that notification bell so you know when I upload a new video, which is every single Tuesday. And sometimes I do additional videos throughout the week. So anyway, guys, thanks for watching. And until next time, I'll see you at the cafe.